I guess I want to say welcome to day three. We'll kick off in about seven minutes at the top of the hour with today's content. Uh, my question uh, for you is what have you enjoyed from the first two days? Let's look at day one for a little bit. Day one to me was fantastic, but it feels so long ago, doesn't it? You know, on day one, we really talked about what it took to actually make a million. True. We, we looked at that. We thought, what does it take to make a million? We really went deep on the difference between employee thinking and entrepreneur thinking. But I want to ask you, that's right, you that's listening right now is what is it that you enjoyed the most out of day one? Because uh, day one to me was a massive, massive big day. And uh, that's exciting for me to say. Making it achievable, love it. Employee mindset, I love it. A lot of you going, whoa, can't remember day one. It was so long ago. We covered a lot on day one. I've got my notes here. I had them up on the board. We talked about how easily to make a million. I gave you the story of Elvis. We talked about the big problem is that you come from an employee past and that certain behaviors have been passed down to you. Uh, we talked about giving and giving and giving rather than taking. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. I love and all this feedback already. So while I'm just getting myself ready, what did you love the most from day two? What did you love most from day two? Because day two, we covered some stuff. What kind of person? Awesome. Huge. Be the glue. Yeah, there's so many ways to make money. We talked about all those different things. You don't have to have a product. Oprah did it. You don't have to have money to make money. J.K. Rowling did it. In fact, I talked about how 64% uh, 64% of people, uh, billionaires, are actually self-made. You know, it's a, it's a big one. A lot of you love that you give and that allows you to be given back. So we covered a lot. Now let's talk about day two because day two is huge. Yeah. The seven self-sabotage uh, patterns. Yeah, cool. Not looking for healing. It's a big problem, I feel, is that, uh, that we keep looking for, he for healing. Who like the tension seeks release and that we have multiple tensions? Who like that? There's multiple tensions. You know, you have the tension of where you're wanting to get to, but then there's also tension holding you behind. And, you know, we've got to look at that before we snap the rubber band. It's funny, my rubber band actually snapped today as I was talking to someone about it. Too much tension uh, on that. We went through the, the different sabotage patterns. The I'm unworthy. I'm not good enough. I don't belong. I can't trust myself. I'm invisible. I'm powerless. I don't have the capacity. I, I'm a perfectionist. Nice. Day two has actually been caught out by state, my statement. Nice. Nice. You put a pair of bands on your vision board. Good one, Denise. Beautiful. I just, I'm beyond grateful for all of your feedback. It's been absolutely uh, humbling to see, you know, hundreds of you write me messages and tell me that it made a difference and made an impact. And so thank you for those of you who made the effort to do that. It means a lot uh, to someone like me who's here to, to really help uh, and, um, and to serve and to, and to everything else. Yeah, that was a big one is there's nothing wrong with you. In fact, the thing that I really want to recap from yesterday is that we're here and we want to get here. There is a really simple and easy action that we're supposed to take that gets us to move. Now, the problem is, is most of us don't take that action. And that's because we end up taking another action that takes us in another way but it's not the way we're supposed to go. So we end up here or here or here or here. The truth is, is the reason why we take all of these actions over here is because we have a sabotage pattern. And the pattern is, is that we're not good enough or we're powerless, so we take this action. Now the challenge is, and what we're gonna to cover today is, is most people wanna go out there and try to, uh, the focus is really bad. Is it bad? Are you guys struggling with focus right now? Should I change cameras? Can you hear me? Is the focus good? Focus is okay? On the board? 
It's fine. Yeah. I think it's just you. <laughs> Goes in and out a little as it's focusing as I come in and out. Maybe I should try to stay in just one place. There we go. <laughs> I don't know. Here, here's the point. Today, we're going to be going into some big things. But yesterday, we really looked at this. You know, why are we taking this action? Why aren't we just doing the action that we're supposed to be doing? And that was a, a big session because I truly believe that the personal development industry is a little bit lost. It's a little bit lost. It's personal development for personal development's sake. It's finding what's wrong with us for finding what's wrong with us sake. And there's a better way. There's a faster way. And there's a different way uh, that is, is so much easier and so much better. And today, that's what we'll be going into. But I'm, I'm just really happy that you're here. I'm really happy. So uh, I'm, I'm excited uh, to welcome you in tonight. I'm excited to, to just keep going. I want to promise you something. You ain't seeing nothing yet. We are just getting started. And this is the, this is the warm up to the real stuff. We're just getting started. We're just getting you aware of what's been stopping you. The truth is, is most people never take the action and get to where they want because they never understand what you're learning. They never understand. I didn't understand it. It wasn't until I was allowed into secret clubs and to hang out with billionaires and to understand some things that I got to figure out that this is what's going on. Now, the truth is, is most of us go and try to focus on all of these things. And by doing so, we reinforce the identity that there's something wrong with us that we need to change. Or we just try to keep the same identity. And I want you to write this down. We try to keep the same identity, but create something new. So we say, I'm not going to change a single thing about myself, but I'm going to try to change my results. Now, that's a problem, too. I'm going to talk about that. So we, I normally see two types of people. There's the one type of person who just is always thinking that there's something wrong. So they're always looking, seeking for a different healing or a different tool or a different training or a different this. That's one type of person. Then the other type of person doesn't think anything's wrong. They're going to stay the same and they think they're just going to take action. They don't get help or look at anything. And the, the truth is, is neither of them are right, but I see a lot of them. You know, I see a lot of them and, and there's, there's a better way and we're going to go through it today. And so the, the, the truth of the matter is this. A lot of us just have the wrong map. I want you to imagine that uh, you're trying to get around Sydney, Australia. And this is before the times of GPS and having a phone that has a great map. You're handed a map and you trust that it's the right map. The truth is, is that the map that you're looking at is actually the map of Auckland, New Zealand. And the, the problem with this is, is you get this map, it, it looks kind of the same. There's a big tall building, there's, you know, there's a waterway, you know, there's a bridge. There's, there's things that are the same between the two cities. And so you get the map and you start driving to where you want to go. And all of a sudden you get frustrated. You get frustrated and you ring up the person who gave you the map and say, hey, I can't find my way around. And they say, oh, gee, that's a bit negative. Work harder. All right, all right, I'll work harder. Keep going, keep going. Getting more confused, more lost, more confused, more lost. Yeah. You ring up and they say, why are you so negative? You need to have a positive mental attitude. Keep going. All right, so you get the map, you keep going around, you keep looking, you keep going, you keep moving, you keep going, you, you keep going, and you get more and more lost. And so then you come across this place that says, hey, if you're not getting what you want, you're broken. Just pay us, and we'll show you how you're broken, how not to be broken. It's because you're broken. And so then you go, all right, it must be me, it must be broken. So then you go through all these things, and then you get back and you look at the map, and you try to make it happen again. And this becomes a massive cycle, a massive problem. Then you go, screw it, you go get another map. And then all of a sudden you get another map and it's the right one. And all of a sudden you're there. You're able to take the action. You're able to do it. And, and that's really what this week is about. Are you with me? It's really about me giving you the right map because the truth is if without the right map, you're not really able to get there and get there fast. And so there's an interesting study of five monkeys. They put five monkeys in a cage. And these scientists were observing them. And at the top of the cage, they put some food, they put a ladder and opened the door. What do you think would happen if there was a bunch of monkeys, some food at the top, a ladder? What do you think they'd do? They would go and run and get the food, wouldn't they? Well, here's what the scientists did. 
is every time the monkeys went to go get the food at the top of the ladder, they sprayed all the monkeys with cold water. And so what happened is, is over time, the monkeys learned that with the ladder, even if it was open food, don't go get it because you're going to get cold water. And even if one of the monkeys thought, you know what, I'm going to go try it. I'm going to go take it. I'm going to take it on myself. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to go climb to the top. I'm going to get the food. Well, all the other monkeys would race in. They would bite. They would claw. They would scratch. They would hit the monkey. They would yell at it. And basically say, what are you doing being so selfish going and getting that food? You know we're about to get frozen with cold water. So the scientists did something interesting. Is they replaced one monkey. When that monkey entered the cage, they put food at the top of the ladder. What do you think the monkey did? That's right. It went up and started running after the food. And what do you think all the other monkeys did? We're about to get frozen cold. They ran over there, grabbed the monkey, pulled it down, hit it, bit it, clawed, told it off, screeched at it. And they repeated this until all five monkeys had been replaced. So now there are five monkeys in the cage that never, ever got any cold water sprayed on them, ever. But guess what happened? The scientists could have the ladder and they could have the food and no monkey would go climb. If one monkey did, the other monkeys would race around, beat at it, scratch at it, claw at it. Who thinks this is pretty interesting? These monkeys don't know why they're doing it. It got even more interesting. Are you with me right now? got even more interesting. These monkeys that never had been sprayed with any cold water all of a sudden had children. Guess what the children of the monkeys that never had sprayed cold water did if there was food at the top of a freaking ladder? They didn't go for it. And if anyone did, they went and they would grab the monkeys, pull it down, bite, scratch, scream, and tell them off. Now, if you ask any of the monkeys, like, why don't you just go get the food? What do you think they'd say? Why don't you just get that food? Look, it's an open gate. There's a ladder. Why don't you just go get it? They'd say, well, look, you must not be from around here. Because here, we don't go for food at top of ladders. It's not what we do. It's not what's done. It's been passed down from generations, from ancestors. It's, been, it's the way it's done. It's just the way it is. We don't go. We don't do that. See, sometimes we don't know that we've been given the wrong map. Sometimes we don't know why we're being told to do things. Let me ask you a question. Are you going to continually blindly following? Or are you going to start asking some things? Are you going to start asking? Are you going to start going, why do we do it this way? Why is this there? Why is this there? Because for me, this is why I got kicked out of high school, because I asked so many questions. I never fit into society. I didn't understand why you go to school. I didn't get it, but I molded myself. I took the pill. I did what I was told. I got the university degree only to realize, like I think you're starting to, that your childhood feelings were right. And all of this constraint and being stuck doesn't make sense. You've just been given the wrong map. You've just been trained by the wrong monkeys. Who's with me? It's time to be the monkey that does it. It's time to get the right map. It's time to actually go out there and make this happen. You see, it's it, sometimes it's just about doing what's right in the face of what others say. And so I want to just take you back to ancient times for a minute. Way back. Thousands and thousands of years. Two men, Bob and Joe, broke suddenly get given a huge opportunity. It's to fetch the water for their city. They are given this great opportunity out of all the men in the city they were picked, privileged. They would go and gather the water every single day. Every day they brought back every bucket of water, they got $1. In the first day, it was hard work. They were able to bring 100 buckets of water back. They got paid a king's ransom, $100. And this went day in, day out, and they started getting tired. And Bob started talking to Joe, Joe to Bob, like, hey, there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way. Joe said to Bob, hey, don't be silly. There are, there are thousands of men lining up that want to take this position. We get to give our families the best camels. We get the best silks. We are the ones that get to shout all the drinks at the local bar. We are privileged. Don't be so silly. Look what we've got. Don't you ruin this. But Bob couldn't. 
He starts taking some time out. He gets criticized by everybody in the town. His wife doesn't understand. His friends don't understand. His kids don't understand. Why is he not bringing 100 buckets each day anymore? Why is he cut it back? He's thinking. He's planning. He's coming up with an idea. And it looks like nothing's happening. Months go by. It looks like nothing's happening. But Bob takes more time out. It looks like nothing's happening. Everyone's getting frustrated. Joe's the hero. He followed through. But Bob, that guy, we gave him a job. He couldn't even do it. Privileged guy, couldn't even do it. Months go by. Months turn into years. It looks like nothing is happening. And finally, he finishes. Bob finally finishes what he was doing. And on that day, his trench was complete. And a thousand buckets of water flowed into the city. He made a thousand dollars that day and the next and the next and the next and the next. Suddenly he became a hero. He employed Joe to look after his trench. Suddenly he was the hero. Suddenly, instead of being this villain, this person that had been so selfish, he was the one that actually made it happen. He created trenches and helped other cities and other towns. He became the hero. So let me ask you the question. Are you going to be Bob or are you going to be Joe? The right answer is Bob, by the way. <laughs> Guys, I want to make sure we get a lot out of today. The truth is, is that it's just a new way of being. It's just a new map. The truth is that it's, you've just got the wrong training from the wrong monkeys. And the truth is you need to stop putting your time in to something that you have to keep putting your time in. And you need to start putting your time into places that are going to pay you for a long time. Give me a yes if you're with me right now and you're ready to really get into today's stuff. Because today is about understanding the system of transformation and actually stepping into what it is that you want to be. See, here's what I want you to understand is you are on autopilot. You're on autopilot. And here's how you're on autopilot. You have some sort of experience. You have some sort of experience. And this experience creates some thoughts. These thoughts send a signal down into your body that creates a feeling. And the feeling creates an action. The action creates your experience. Let me give you an example. You get the experience of being rejected by someone attractive of the opposite sex. Your thoughts are, I'm not worthy. The signal that gets sent into your gut is a feeling of dread, a feeling of being rejected. The action is embarrassment. You get red in the face, you feel ashamed, and you walk away. The experience you code up is it's not safe to put yourself out there. What happens over time is this gets turned into an automatic system. So, for example, when you first drive a car, you have the experience, you have thoughts, you create feelings, and then you create actions. But over time, over time, your body goes on autopilot. And this is done on purpose. You actually train your body on how it's supposed to act, and then it works for you. It works for you. So you spend some time figuring out how to drive a car. Now it just knows. It's unconsciously competent. It's automatic. So now you don't have to think about all the things going on. You can drive and talk to someone else. Let me put this in perspective like of a, of a sports person. A sports person can't possibly think of all the things they need to do in a split second. Think about it when a cricket ball comes flying off a bat and they run and grab it. When a basketball player has to move and make the right pass at the right time, it's not because of thought. It's done unconsciously. It's done instinctively, isn't it? It couldn't be done. So what happens is they've trained and trained and trained and trained and trained so their body can just take over. Who's with me right now? Who's feeling this? 
Now, Chris, well, what does this have to do with, with mindset and money? Well, what experience did you have growing up? What experiences have you had in your mind that created thoughts, that sent signals to your body, that created feelings, that created actions? And you have just done it so many times. Aren't you just running on autopilot? Aren't you just running on autopilot? You have the experience of scarcity. So you think, why don't we have enough money? Then this, then this, then this, then this. Why is this important to understand? Why is this important to understand? Let me have a look at some of these chats. Got it. Here's why this is important to understand. Because this exact same process, this exact same process is exactly how we condition a new reality. A new reality. Let me explain. You're here at point A. You want to be here at point B. To get there, what you must know is that there's different, there's different levels. There's different ways to get there. Here's what a lot of us try to do. A lot of us try to go the really slow way. We try to go the slowest route. We try to do it in 3D. We try to make it happen. We try to focus on a few things. So the, the slowest way to get from here, and let's just really create this, and let's, let's really talk about what these two, two places are. This side here is the self-employed self -employed struggle. Over here is millions of dollars and doing what matters. And this is the jump that we want to make today. We want to go from there to there. Now, because your brain is able to recode itself, we just need to understand how this person operates, but how to get there. So there's a few different ways that you can get there. In fact, there is, uh, there's five. There's five different ways that you can get there. One, two, three, four, five. I've actually got six up here. Okay. Let's talk about it. The first way you can get from here to here is you can take different actions. The second way you can get from here to here is you can change your environment. The third way you can get from here to, to here is you can change your actions environment. You can change your capability. The next way you can get from here uh, to here is you can change your beliefs. The next way to get from here to here is you can change your emotions. And the last way to get from there to there is you change your identity. Now, which one is fastest? Which one is fastest? Actions, environment, capability, beliefs, emotion, and identity. There's a reason why I drew this triangle. See, down here, the move you need to make, the identity shift makes it faster. If you're going to do it with actions, it's super slow, if ever. The key is the further down you go with identity or emotions or beliefs, the quicker the change. The quicker the change. Does that make sense? Identity is the fastest way to get there because... If you become this person, if you become this person now, guess what's going to change? If you change your identity, let me ask you all a question. If you change your identity, do you change your emotions that you live from? If you change your identity and your emotions, do you have to change your beliefs too? If you change those, you also have to change the capability, things you're capable of. Your environment, yes. Your actions, yes. If you try doing it top down, it just won't happen. 
it just won't happen. The key thing, the key thing that you must focus on is you must focus on changing the identity because when you live from a different identity, a different I am statement, everything else changes. Everything else changes. So, what's the key? The key isn't to just do aimless action. The key isn't to try to pay to hang out with different people. The key isn't to learn new things. The key isn't to focus on beliefs. The key is to get down here and emotions and identity. It's to change there. That's the fast way. The key isn't to try to look back at your past and heal yourself. It's to shift into a new you. Let me ask, who's ready to be a new them? Who's ready to be a new you? I'd like you all to type in an I am statement. Who are you now? Who are you now? Has anybody seen the picture of me with the dreadlocks down to my backside DJing? Anyone seen that picture? I could probably find it on my computer. I wasn't planning to, to show it. Let's see if I can quickly find it. just because it's kind of funny. No, I can't seem to see it right now. That's all right, I'll show you guys. I'll promise to post it up in the group. The reason why this is so important is when you change, when you say, I am a successful, multi-million dollar speaker, I impact the world, I change the world, and then you live from there. That is the shift. Here's the problem. You make the shift, your brain is still looking for proof. Isn't it true? So you write it in, I am a multi-million dollar speaker, I make millions, I impact millions. I make millions, I impact millions. I am this, you do it. But what does your brain say? No, you're not. No, you're not. And that's the thing we have to help, right? I say, I am this, you see? And that's the crucial shift, is you must understand how to shift your identity and to live from a new way of being. And this is how we create a fast change. This is how we create it, is we must move into a new place of being and start operating from a new way of being. And so the question that I want to ask you is, are you truly willing and ready to shift and step into who it, are, who it is that you are now and let go of who you've been? Because stepping into a new way, you have different behaviors, different emotions. You dress differently. You have different friends. You have different skills. You have different, you do different things on a Saturday night. You're different. You feel different. And tomorrow we're going to do a full process on actually stepping into this identity. Today I'm going to give you the, the beliefs and, and the understanding and the emotions that you must live from. But this is the key thing. Trying to create something new but keeping the old identity is literally like driving around Sydney holding a map of Auckland. It will not happen. It won't. You'll get a little bit there, but then you're just not that person. So you'll suddenly end up back here. You must shift into a new way of being. Luckily for you, change is easy. Change is easy, but you have to be willing to do it. So let's start talking about who it is that you are now. Are you guys enjoying this? Thanks, Wayne. It's gold, gold, gold. Who's there getting something out of this? Who's understanding what they need to do? Who's seeing where they need to play the game? Give me some love. Where's, where's this going? You guys enjoying it? Is this far more than you thought you'd get in a free five-day challenge? I hope, it's a, I hope it is. I hope that you're getting it all because this is the key shift is you must turn out and shift into somebody who has that and start living from that and living in those emotions. 
And so you might say to yourself, but Chris, like my bank account, and your brain will say this. Go, oh yeah, but look at your bank account. I want to tell you one more story and you're going to love it. It's the story of a seed. If you were to pick up a seed and you were to look at it, do you know that that seed knows and believes that it's a giant, it's a giant tree. It knows it. It's already it. But you might say to the seed, hey, seed, you're not a big tree. You're not a big tree. Seed, you're not a big freaking tree. Seed would say, well, plant me in the right environment. Plant me in the right place. You'll see. You'll see. Michael Jordan said this. I was always a champion. It's just waiting for the world to see it. Who knows that to be true? Who knows that they don't have to see it to know they're it? There's two places of manifestation always. First on the invisible, then in the visible. First on the invisible, and then in the visible. Don't you dare let that conscious brain say to you, but I can't see it yet. You go, yeah, so what? When I look at a tree, I don't see anything. It's growing roots. It's doing what it's doing, but it's going to happen. I believe in it. You see, conscious brain wants to keep you in your old past, wants to keep you back here, wants to hold you down, wants to go back here. And you've got to be able to go, know what I know. I can see in nature. This isn't just some young redheaded dude telling me that. I see it in freaking nature. That's what happens is that it happens invisible. You open up that seed. You look at it. There's no blooming instructions. There's no instruction saying that uh, how to get the water from the ground, turn it into sap, what to do if there's bugs on you, how to create bark, how to move. If, if there's a power pylon that gets put through the power cables, right? There, there's no, you can't look at it. You can't see it. You can't examine it. There's no tree yet, but it's the tree. That's the tree. And I want you to know this from me as I believe in you, when you believe in you, when you choose your potential, because this is what's so crucial to understand. And I've got to let you get this. The hardest thing about being a human being is we've got choice. The seed has no choice. It knows it's the tree. It's done. Our hardest problem is choosing what we're going to be. <laughs> we actually have choice. And so let me ask you, are you willing? Are you willing to choose to be a multimillionaire that changes the world? I'm going to give you the beliefs. Are you willing to make a lot of money? Are you willing to understand how it works? But if you're willing, I'm willing to teach you and share with you some of the things you need to understand. So the first thing you need to understand about money, let me ask you a question. What is money? What is money? What is money? Whenever I ask that question, someone always tells me money's energy. It's the biggest lie ever. Money is not energy. Money is a measurement. Money measures a value exchange. Money is not energy. Money is a measurement of a value exchange. You can have a value exchange without money, but money measures it. There's nothing to be scared of a measurement. It's just measuring how much you have given to someone and how much they value to give back to you. It doesn't say that you change the world. It's just a freaking measurement. It's just measured how much you have given to somebody and they've been willing to give back to you to receive that. That's all it is. It's a measurement. Second, money doesn't flow to people that take. It can't because who has to give the money? People because they had to go and give to someone else. Money is a flow. In order for this client to pay you, they had to go and give their service to somebody else or create a product. That employer paid them. 
then they were able to give you some of their measurement. So then you were able to solve a problem for them. And that's all it is. And it passes along. It's, it's all it is. You could never have take. In order for that person to have money, they had to give to their employer what their employer desired. Money flows in alignment with humans' desire. Well, Disney made a lot of money because we desired to go to his theme park to watch his movies. J.K. Rowling made truckloads of money because we desired to read her books. It is never a take. It is always a give. It flows to give. This is where, where some people uh, get it wrong. Money doesn't care whether you do good or bad because it's a freaking measurement. <laughs> it doesn't care whether you do good or bad. It flows to where you meet the desire of other humans. Who's with me right now? It doesn't flow to good or bad. It doesn't have a consciousness. It's not a freaking energy. It's a measurement of something you have done. Money does not change you. Money gives you more choice. Whatever choices you're making now, having more of it, you will just make more of those choices. Let me ask you, do you give some money to people now? Do you give your time? Do you give your service? When you get more money, you'll give more. You will not turn into some evil, bad person. That evil, bad person was evil and bad without money. Money didn't do that to them. Money will magnify who you are now. Money is just a unit of choice. It's a unit of choice. The more of it you have, the more choices you can make. Who got a little bit of a better understanding of money just now? It's, it's nothing. It measures what you have to give to another human being to fulfill your desire and it measures how much other people have given to you when you fulfilled their desires. Your goal, your goal is to find desires that people have and to create a solution that they want to pay you for. That's it. Find desires that people have, find a solution, and then find how to deliver this with no time. Find a way to deliver the solution to someone's desire without your time. Find a way to deliver a solution to somebody's desire without your time. Find a way, that's it. Find a way to give people what they want to pay for without your time. Who needs to type that in? Find a way, I must find a way to give people what they desire and what they'll pay for. I find a way to give people a solution to their desires without, without using my time. If you buy property, you're giving people a place to live, so they pay you rent. If you invest in the stock market, you're giving startup capital or growth capital to businesses, and that's what they need, so they give you a piece of it. Start a cafe, you're feeding hungry people. If you create a health product, you're helping. You see, all of it is that. 
you've got cash, you invest into a business. If you don't, go create some cash. I must find a way to provide a solution to what people desire that works without my time. When you do that, when you have a system that does this, you're, you're free. You're free, baby. You are a millionaire doing what matters most. So let's talk about some of these beliefs because this, let me ask you right now, who's feeling the ease when I share it with you? Who can feel the ease? Oh, I've lost my pocket square. Because it's easy for me. So I want to teach you this new identity. I'm going to give you each one. I would like you to type it in or write it down. Each one of these is a statement that I have used to create my new identity. My new identity that I live and breathe and that I'm teaching you to step into. Here's the identity. I want to make loads of money, have an amazing time, and I want to change lives. That's it. Simple. I want to make loads of money. I want to leave a positive impact, and I want to enjoy my time. That's it. That's what should be on my tombstone. Chris Duncan made loads of money enjoyed his time, and impacted loads of people positively. That is a life worth lived. Who's with me on that? Who's with me on that? I want to make loads of money. I want to enjoy my time. And I want to impact the world positively. And so what I did is I thought, you know what? That's what I want to do. That's who I am. That's what I do. That's who I create. And that's who I want to attract. People who need to step into that person. You know why? Because why not? You give me a better option and I'll consider it. But as far as I can see, that's the best option. As far as I can see, that's the best option. Type in a number one if you're one of the people that are with me on this. Just give me a quick one so I can see if this is landing or if I need to, uh, to do some more because I want to see some ones popping in because I want to go through the beliefs that have helped me to create this identity of making millions of dollars, impacting millions of people and having a great time. Thank you. Good, good, good. <laughs> I like that someone wrote one out. Thank you, Brad. There's always one of you. <laughs> okay, so here's the first statement. The first statement of somebody in the new identity. This is your first statement. I am truly satisfied with everything I have now, and I desire more. I am truly satisfied with everything I have now and I desire more. This is the first belief that you must, you must get inside you, that you're truly satisfied with everything you have now and you want more of it. Never be motivated by running away. This is the first one. Type it in, write it down. I am truly satisfied with everything I have now and I desire more of it. The second statement. The second statement is. I deserve to be rich because I add massive value to other people's lives. I deserve to be rich because I add massive value to other people's lives. I deserve to be rich because I add massive value to other people's lives. Write it down, type it in, own it.
I deserve to be rich because I add massive value to other people's lives. Next one. I am financially free. I choose, I work because I choose to, not because I have to. I am financially free. I work because I choose to, not because I have to. I am financially free. I work because I choose to, not because I have to. And those are the first three. I'm financially free. I work because I choose to, not because I have to. Type it in, write it down. Who's liking these, by the way? Are they good? This is your new identity. This is your new you if you choose to take it on. Here's the next one. Money works for me and makes me more money. Money works for me and makes me more money. Money works for me and makes me more money. Next one, money is a unit of choice. The more I have, the more I can choose to do. Money is a unit of choice. The more I have, the more I can choose to do. Money is a unit of choice. The more I have, the more I can choose to do. Money is just a unit of choice. The more I have, the more I can choose to do. And I want you to feel that one. The more I can give, the more I can support, the more I can change the planet, the more I can do. Thanks, David. Love it. Money is a unit of choice. The more I have, the more I can choose to do. And last one. Money is like air. Enough for all to have as much as they please. Money is like air, enough for all to have as much as they please. Breathe it in. Money is like air, enough for all to have as much as they please. Now these are all important for different reasons. The first one allows you to appreciate the now. I'm truly satisfied with everything I have and I desire more meaning you're satisfied now and you want more of it, meaning you're not trying to get away from anything. The second one allows you to understand that you must give to get, given back to. I deserve to be rich because I add value to other people's lives. The third one, I am financially free. I work because I choose to, not because I have to. It reminds you that you're choosing to do what it is that you want to do, because no one wants to sit on the beach and do nothing for the rest of their life. They want to do something. The next one is to, is to understand that money pays your staff, money pays for your marketing, money pays for your house, money pays for your investments. Money is your number one asset that we'll use to grow. So here's the saying, money works for me and makes me more and more money. Money, you put it to work. Get it out there working for you. Get it bringing in more dollars, bringing in more work for you. The next one, it helps you to understand that money won't change you. It just gives you more choices. Money is a unit of choice. The more I, uh, the more I, money is a unit of choice. The more I have, the more I can choose to do. And then the last one reminds you, there's unlimited money. Remember that there's 8 billion people on the planet or something like that. And remember that money just measures the value you provide to humans. There's an unlimited amount of humans pretty much. And they definitely have an unlimited amount of desires. And all you need to do is find a desire, create a solution that works without your time. Let me ask, who's committed to stepping into this new identity of being somebody who makes millions, impacts millions, and enjoys the ride.
from now on, you are going to act from this place. These are your new beliefs. That is your new identity. Tomorrow, I'm going to take you through a process to get this locked in neurologically so that it's true. So here's what I want you to do over the next 24 hours. Number one, I want you to go make a public commitment to who you are. I want you to introduce us to the new you. Hi, my name is Chris Duncan, and here's who I am. I make millions of dollars. I impact millions of people, and I have a great time doing it. I'm so excited to be here. I want a new group introduction in our private group. It's not going to the world, so it feels safe. I want a new freaking introduction. I want you to step forward as the new you in the group. No looking back. Tomorrow, we're going to use a in-depth process to embed this. Tomorrow, I'm going to be sitting down. Tomorrow, there's going to be a very short preamble, and then we're going through a closed eye process that a billionaire taught me that will change your life. It's the most powerful process I've ever been shown, and I can't wait to share it with you. Do not miss out on the session tomorrow. Do not expect to take much notes. Tomorrow, expect to get deep. Because here's what's interesting, is we can actually create an experience in our mind. And that experience can send a signal, can create a thought. And that thought can create a signal and that signal can create a feeling. And then that feeling will create an action that will create your life experience. And we will program this in tomorrow. So here's what you need to do. Number one, reintroduce yourself to our Facebook tribe. Number two, decide. Decide if you're ready to go full in. Because tomorrow, we will close our eyes. I'll take you through a guided process that will help you step into who you're being. And I promise you, you've never done it before. I promise. I've done all of Robin's stuff, all of Harvecker's stuff. I've done NLP twice, EFT. I've done Reiki. I did everything that you've done. Did the Martini method. I went to Joe Dispenza's, done all of his work. I've gone right through Matrix Energetics, every spiritual thing. Avatar training, Matt, I promise you what we go through tomorrow, you've never seen. You've never experienced because I hadn't either. Guys, did you have a good session today? Day number three, hump day. It's all downhill from here. Who's having a good week? <laughs> Guys, I'm excited. It's right on time for me to be shifting into Q&A on the group. I freaking love you guys. This is such a pleasure. You have no idea how grateful I am just to be here to serve and to give and to to just be pouring my heart into you. Let's go make a big introduction into the group. In five minutes, I'm just gonna fill up my glass of water. In five minutes, I'm gonna be in there, a live Q&A session. I will be with you for another 10 minutes tonight. You can connect with me, you can talk, but go make a new introduction, uh, who you are, let's step into that new identity, and let's be that now. No turning back, make the commitment. Tomorrow, we're going through a really cool process. You've never done it before. I care about you. I love you. I'll see you in the group. Thanks for playing full out tonight or today or this morning or whatever it is. I feel like the Truman Show. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever it is. You guys are awesome. <laughs> I'll see you in the group.